GCSE Chemistry Core Practical Investigating the electrolysis of copper sulphate solution with inert and copper electrodes. Chemistryinfo.co.uk Electrolysis starting with the inert electrodes. Copper sulphate is an electrolyte. It's an ionic substance dissolved in water. Electrolysis uses electrical energy from direct current to decompose electrolytes. The resulting positive ions travel to the negative cathode and the negative ions travel to the positive anode. At the negative cathode, copper and hydrogen ions are in solution, but copper is below the hydrogen in the reactivity series and as a result, it's copper that accepts electrons at the cathode and is deposited. As the copper ions are gaining electrons, this is called reduction. At the positive anode, sulfate and hydroxide ions are in solution, and this time it's the hydroxide ions that give up electrons at the anode, forming water and oxygen. This loss of electrons is called oxidation. Copper sulphate is poured into a beaker with two inert carbon electrodes and a current passed through. It's possible to see the oxygen bubbling at the positive anode. And after a while, the copper becomes apparent at the negative cathode. The copper tends to float on the surface of the copper sulphate rather than adhere to the cathode as you'd like. It might be sensible to collect the gas and test it. This experiment can be repeated using just copper electrodes. Copper again is deposited at the cathode, but instead of oxygen at the anode, copper two ions go into solution. As a result, there is a net transfer of copper metal from the anode to the cathode, and this can be used for the purification of copper. Prior to use, the electrodes are cleaned with emery paper. This is to get rid of the copper oxide which might otherwise prevent a current flowing. The balance is zeroed and the electrodes are weighed. In this case, we're starting with the anode. The electrode is uh, connected to the circuit using a crocodile clip, though I do seem to make it rather difficult. It was a very tough crocodile clip. The process is repeated for the cathode. Remembering to clean it again with emery paper. The circuit is complete and the power can be turned on. We're making a note of the time and the current because we could use this to calculate the number of electrons flowing and the theoretical mass of copper deposited.
The experiment was left alone to continue for over 10 minutes, so I have sped up this section of the video. And now we're back to normal speed. This experiment probably should have been run for 10 minutes exactly, but I just ran it until the changes at the electrodes were obvious. Now we can remove the anode, but before we weigh it, we have to dry it, and I'm going to do that using propanone. I'll soak it with propanone and then leave it to evaporate, resulting in a dry electrode, hopefully. The electrode, once dried, can be weighed. The anode has lost approximately 0.25 of a gram. The process is repeated for the cathode. Once again, waiting for it to dry before putting it on the top pan balance. The cathode has gained approximately 0.13 of a gram. Unfortunately, there's rather a lot of sludge left at the bottom of the beaker. Most of this sludge will be copper, but there may be some impurities as well. We're using the propanone to dry the sludge, well, to get it out of the beaker and to dry the sludge.
Having left this too to dry, we find that the mass of the sludge turns out to be about 0.17 of a gram. So here are the results using the copper electrodes. The loss at the anode, the gain at the cathode, the copper deposited in the beaker itself. The numbers don't quite add up, but this is potentially due to some propanone remaining after the drying process. Thank you for watching.